Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and you may notice that I posted some videos in Bahasa Indonesia which is actually intent to my students in Indonesia. Due to COVID-19, I cannot go there and besides there is no class activity in Indonesian universities for about, um, I don't know for how long but I think it's gonna be a while. So let's continue our tutorial. In this video, I will share how to create an animated plot using ggAnimate and ggplot libraries. The type of the plot is line plot and as usual you don't need to be worried. You can get the scripts in my blog which I write on the description section. The data I use is again uh, COVID-19 data which is a very interesting data and I have downloaded it previously from GitHub. The data is collected by John Hopkins University. Please have checked my previous video to learn how to download it using our studio. And this tutorial forced me to install the full version of our studio. There are some other libraries actually, such as Magic, uh, Magic N A G I C K, so V K and Animate, but I stick with ggAnimate because those two libraries unfortunately cannot be installed in my system. I don't know why but I think it's because of those libraries are not available for my 3.4 something uh, our studio versions and I don't feel like I want to install the newest versions so well I've been talking a lot so let's start first let's install the library which is gifski for creating the gif and then ggAnimate and if you have installed it please just uh, load it into the system of your R studio okay next I'm gonna make this video a bit faster and I will just comment it whenever like I need to clarify something Okay, let's set the working directory and then read the files. In this tutorial, I will use a lot of uh, functions for loop and also uh, lovely families, I mean, ugly families. Okay, please check. Uh, this is how to read files as a list. And then uh, we're going to read the global case. That's why we use the pattern is global. So if we check the files, there are three files. And then to read it, we use the functions of read CSV, but we have to specify that the child name is set to be false so that we can get uh, the same exact uh, data with the CSV files. Uh, if you don't use the check uh, names false, you will get a capital X in each of the column. So we'll, we're gonna select only Singapore as because this is the country where I residing. And uh, oh, sorry. Okay. We use the function the subset functions to select the data which has only for Singapore and then the next we need to transpose it because we would like to change the column into the row and we're going to make it as one data frame only and we take the row name as a gate. Oh, uh, I was wrong in here. We have to remove some of the rows that uh, we don't need in creating the plot, which is row 1 to row 4. They are province, state, country, regions, and so on. The longitude. And then we then realize when we transpose the data, it makes our data to be all characters and characters cannot be plot of course and only the numeric can be uh, plotted but yeah we're gonna deal with it uh, after this because we're going to 
change the format of the date information as the uh, format recognized by our studio. Okay, this is how to change the format by using edit date functions. Okay, when we get the data, we then change all the columns into numeric by using apply function. So the F, the data, and then two represents columns, and then change all of the columns into numeric. So we then create a data frame, a new data frame, by combining date and the FSG. So you know that the difference between matrix and data frames that data frames can store more than one type of data. And that's also the kind of data that's recognized by dzplot function. And we're going to change the column names. And then if we check the first six rows of our data are given here. And this is the kind of data that already can be plot by using the dgplot functions of dgplot2 library. Okay, we set the x is date and then y is confirm and then we put group 1 and we select the geom line because the graph is in the line format and to animate it we use the transitions reveal is that and then we animate it and set the format of our animation. The duration can be changed. I'm currently using 5 seconds, but you can uh, increase or decrease the durations if you would like to uh, use a longer or shorter time. And then the rendering process quite takes time. And we use the renderer is UC renderer to create a GIF file. If you don't use it, then uh, the RStudio will automatically print a lot of PNG files. So that's the display of our animations. And of course, we can save it as a GIF extension file. Just specify the name with uh, anim save and give the GIF extensions. Okay, I'm gonna back to the normal speed because if I make it faster, then uh, it's gonna be difficult to see the animations. And this is the preview of the animations because this is the default program in my computer. But of course, you can open it using another program such as insert it in a PowerPoint or using your internet browser. So if example, mine is Safari. And this is the display by using Safari. It's quite nice in my opinion. And okay, that's all for the tutorial. I hope that you can learn something from this video. And in the next video, we are going to still using the same data and adding the other two variables into the syntax, which are the dead and the recovered uh, number of people. And then we are gonna try to animate it using the same uh, syntax as used in this video. I will also like to try breaking down some of the DigiPod syntax so we can learn together about it. See you in the next video. Happy staying at home and bye-bye.